Guys, we did it. We've hit 50,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. It's such a huge milestone, not only for myself, but for you guys as well, because we've been able to build this community together, which is exactly why I wanted to start doing this in the first place. I wanted to show you guys that no matter your experience, whether you've never wrenched on a car or taken it to an autocross or the track, that you can go out and work on your own car or take it to the track just like I've done. I'll continue to say this. I'm a car enthusiast just like you guys, but I happen to have a camera. And without your support, I wouldn't be anything different, which is exactly why I wanna be able to help you enjoy your car to the fullest. So thank you to everyone for your continued support, whether you've been here ever since the beginning or you caught me at my lowest point, or hell, maybe this is the first time tuning into one of my videos. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your life, no matter how small or big an impact that I've made. Now, I promise you that once we hit 50,000 subscribers, we'd celebrate with some sort of giveaway. So here it is. And I know that the last giveaway was kind of dependent on owning a GR86 or BRZ, but this time around, it's something that anyone can enjoy. And if you watch the Dream Shop update video, you'll know exactly what this is. Up for grabs is a wheel end table. Let me show you guys. If you guys didn't already notice, my area is kind of quarantined off at the moment, and that's because there's construction going on over there, and I didn't want the drywall dust getting over everything, which is why it's all covered up. But let's pull this off and show you what I'm talking about. Excuse the mess, but here is an example of a wheel end table. Obviously, you're not gonna get this exact one because this one's for the shop, but what you are gonna get is an Aeroflow Dynamics GT1 wheel with the stand that turns it into a table along with the glass that goes on top to finish it off. This is genuinely one of my favorite things here at the shop, so I'm excited to be able to give one away. Here is what I need you to do to enter. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and then head over to Instagram and follow my personal page and the Driven Media page. I'll link them down below. Once you've done that, come back and write a comment that includes your Instagram handle so that I can check and then share a core memory of yours that got you into the car scene in the first place. I love hearing about these because everyone's is a little bit different. I'll go first. Back when I was in middle school, my older brother had a fifth gen Honda Prelude with the classic super ricey fiberglass body kit and a baby blue Mako paint job. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Well, one night he took me out on these toge runs with his friends. I say toge, but in reality, there's no mountains here in Iowa. So it was more just some teenage hooligans driving around on some windy roads in what I think was a park. But that memory has stuck with me ever since and kind of kick-started my love for cars. So yeah, share your stories down below. I can't wait to read them. I'm gonna randomly pick a winner three weeks from now and announce it in the video that drops that day. Good luck to everybody who participates. And with that being said, let's get to the rest of the video. We are gonna be installing something that has been sitting on my shelves for way too long. We have the Alpha Rex tail lights and the trunk light. Tons of people have been asking questions about these, which leads me to believe that the installation is gonna suck, at least for the trunk light. I've installed plenty of tail lights, so that shouldn't be a problem, but we are gonna get through this together. Let's take a look at what we've got here. We'll start with the tail lights first. Packed very nicely. So this is the Lux Series tail lights from Alpha Rex. I opted for the red lens. Curious to see how the red on red looks. I really enjoyed the Valentis with the red lens on the car, so I'm excited. Hey, it comes with a security bit tool for the stock trim piece. So this is the piece that most people are interested in. It's available in smoke or red, but since I got the red tail lights, I figured we may as well go for the red trunk light as well. Like I said, I was very pleased with how the red lens Valentis looked on the car. So I kind of just went crazy with the red. Who knows, maybe I'll regret it or maybe it'll look dope. We're gonna find out. We're gonna start with the tail lights first. You guys know the drill. Grab a plastic pry tool and we're gonna to pry off this plastic trim piece on the inner side. That reveals two 10 millimeter bolts. There's also one on top here. 
Now we can grab our tail light and pull it straight towards the back of the car. Be careful not to scratch the paint on the underside here. I'd recommend putting some masking tape on that area if this is your first time doing this. Once you have the tail lights off of the car, you wanna look on the back side. I have this flipped upside down right now. We need to transfer over the trim piece that's on the very top. It's held in with two of these screws that you'll need that security bit tool that's included. I have a security bit tool set, so I'm just gonna be using that instead. And with the screws removed, we should be able to just slide this piece off. We can take our new tail light and you can use this pin right here to guide the trim piece into place and then install these screws that you took off of the stock tail light into the same locations. We're gonna connect our new tail lights. Now if you look on the back side of the tail lights, you'll also see these two blue wires that are connected. This controls your turn signal. By default, they come connected, which means you're gonna get a normal blinking turn signal. If you disconnect them, which is what I'm gonna do, that gives you a sequential turn signal. I'm gonna tuck these down here. To be safe, I would recommend probably taping those up with some electrical tape. And now we are going to carefully line up the tabs on the outer side, as well as the one on the inside here. And the tail light should slide right into place. And all we need to do is reinstall the hardware. On the driver's side tail light, you'll notice an extra white connector here with a black and green wire. This is for the trunk light bar. If you aren't installing one of those, you can just disregard this and just connect the white connector and then decide if you want to keep the blue wires connected or disconnect them for the sequential turn signal. Let's hop inside the car and run through the functions. As always, I'm gonna start by turning the headlights on so you can see the startup sequence, which is one of the most unique features about these tail lights. It's sort of a snake effect around the outer ring, getting brighter each time until it turns off and then fades back in. And this is how the tail lights are gonna look at night when you have your headlights on. It's such a distinct look, no other tail light has this sort of design. I'm gonna step on the brake and you'll see it's the upper portion of the center of the tail light, super bright and visible to those behind you. No one can say that they didn't see you coming to a stop or slowing down. And then here are the hazards. You can see the sequential turn signals going from the inner side of the light to the top corners. And again, if you prefer just a normal blinking turn signal, all you have to do is make sure those two blue wires are connected when you're installing the taillights and you'll have a normal blinking turn signal instead of the sequential turn signals. Now let me turn the headlights off so you can see what these will look like during the day. Here are the brakes again. This time around, not only will the top center portion light up, but the outer ring lights up as well, making them even more visible during the day. And then hazards again. And there you have it guys. Now we can move on to the trunk light bar. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit worried that I overdid it with the red on red just because the Valenti red lenses looked good on the car doesn't mean that these would. But look at that guys, we did it again. I don't know what it is about the red on red, but it looks fantastic. With it being the black base, it gives the outer portion of the tail light here more of a dark cherry red which contrasts against the red paint really well and also makes it blend in a little bit better with the black accents across the trunk. And then this outer ring portion, which is the parking light, matches up almost perfectly with the red paint on the car. Look at that, guys. I can't wait to see what this is gonna look like once we have the trunk light bar installed. 
We gotta take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video. If you happen to be someone who enjoys working on your own car, doing your own maintenance and servicing it, do me a quick favor and look into Tecron's Fuel System Cleaner. I know a bunch of people that change their own oil, brake pads, rotors, and brake fluid and transmission fluid, but they never do anything about their fuel system. So they could be getting carbon buildup and corrosion that's happening and you don't even know about it. Well, Tecron makes it super simple and easy. Pick up a bottle of this, dump it into your gas tank. I usually do it every oil change to make it easy to remember. And this ensures that your fuel system stays clean and clear of that carbon buildup and helps to protect against corrosion. I use this in all of my cars, the GR86, WRX, my truck, my wife's Mazda CX-9 that has over 330,000 miles on it. And with the routine use of this, we have had no problems whatsoever. Hopefully, these two cars make it to 150,000 miles. But yeah, if you care about your car, add some Tecron fuel system cleaner to your routine maintenance and take care of your fuel system. I'll leave a link down in the description. We are done with the easy part. The trunk light bar requires a little bit more work than the taillights because it's incorporated into the trunk itself. So what we actually need to do is remove this upper portion with the duck bill and make some modifications to it to allow the trunk light bar to be installed. On the underside of the trunk, we need to remove these seven pop clips that are holding this cover in place. And that's gonna give us access to the nuts and bolts that are securing the trunk spoiler to the trunk. We're gonna to wanna to disconnect the two white connections. This one's for the third brake light. This is also the perfect time to install an F1 blinking module. If you want, they're back in stock. And then this is for, I believe the camera and trunk button. I'm also gonna push these through the hole so that we don't have to tug on the gaskets and risk damaging them. And now there are a total of six eight millimeter nuts in these openings here that we're going to remove. Be really careful not to drop these into the trunk opening. Otherwise you're gonna have a hell of a time trying to fish them out. So when you're unscrewing these, keep pressure against the trunk so that it doesn't come off of the long stud. And then just take your finger and make sure it doesn't fall out of the socket and then pull it out. On both sides of the trunk in the area right above the tail light, you're gonna have two more eight millimeter bolts that you're gonna to wanna to remove. The only thing holding the trunk lip in place now is the plastic retainer clip. So we need to firmly pull the trunk lip off of the trunk. The easiest way to do so is open up the trunk all the way and we're gonna push it towards the front of the car on the outer edge here. So on this black plastic piece, I'm on the passenger side right now, I'm gonna put my thumbs on here and press it towards the front of the car until I hear those clips pop out. And you're gonna have to use a decent amount of pressure. It's a little bit scary, but you won't be breaking anything. On the back of the spoiler, I've got it flipped upside down right now. So this is the bottom. There's gonna be a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws that we need to remove. And that includes the two screws that are holding in the trunk button. Once we have those screws removed, there's gonna be two tabs that you're gonna be looking for, one on each side. You're gonna to wanna to press it down and then towards the back of the spoiler to pop the trim piece free. Now this is where we need to make some modifications. If you take a look in the area where we just removed that trim piece, you'll see all of these tabs that run across the length of the spoiler. We actually need to cut these out to create a gap for the new light to sit in, which is exactly why they included a pair of side cutters in the package. This is a pretty tedious task, so I'm gonna show you guys a few and then quickly do the rest. What I would recommend is taking some masking tape or painter's tape and taping off the edge of the paint here just to help protect it when you're trying to stuff the side cutters in, you don't accidentally scratch up your paint. We were actually gonna be ditching the side cutters because I tried using these on the other side and it actually started cracking the plastic, which we obviously don't want. So instead, 
I'm gonna be using a Dremel with a cutoff wheel. This is going to be a lot faster and easier to use anyway. So if you have one of these laying around, I would highly suggest you use one of these instead. I'm gonna show you guys how to do the end tab, the two end tabs. And then once you see that, you should get an idea of how to do the rest of them. All right, for this large end tab here, I'm gonna start by cutting straight across the top here. I'll just follow that curve all the way across the top. Now we're gonna come over to the side and we're gonna follow this line. Not sure if you can see it on the camera, but there's this edge here that goes upwards, or I guess this is the bottom. So straight down towards the edge we just cut. Now for this bottom portion here, if you look inside this gap, there is a piece that goes across the bottom. I'm gonna use that as a guide to cut the side piece right here. I'm gonna grab some pliers and see if I can break off this edge piece here. There we go. I'm gonna snap off the top piece as well. And now we're gonna make two cuts, one on the very bottom of the tab and then one on this angle here and then we should be able to just break this free. Hopefully that's enough where we can just pull this piece out. And there we go, just clean up these edges. For this next one, I'm gonna make one small cut at the very top first. And now we just need to make a cut along the bottom here and then along the top edge and then break it free. And there you go. Now it is pretty much completely off and it leaves a gap here and we just do the rest of them to open up that gap. And then we need to drill some holes to route the wiring, and then we can install the light bar. I've got all the tabs cut off, so now we're gonna move on to drilling the holes to route the wiring to the inside of the trunk. We're gonna be drilling a hole in this location right here on both sides. So you have the hole for the mounting tab of the accent piece we removed, and then the hole for the screw here, and we're gonna be drilling a hole on the side of this corner here. So what I'm actually gonna do is remove this stud to give us a little bit more room. And then I'm gonna take my drill with a small drill bit just to get started. Now for the final hole size, I'm gonna use a 3 16 drill bit. Now is the moment of truth. We're gonna test fit the light bar to see whether or not it fits. So we're gonna route the wiring through those holes we drilled first. All right, fingers crossed guys. All right, I think we are good to go. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to reinstall the screws that we took out. I'm gonna double check it again to make sure there's not any weird gaps. And then we can put this thing back on the car. I've got the new light installed onto our spoiler, but before we move on to the wiring and getting this thing reinstalled onto the car, let's talk about the trunk button, because a lot of people have had questions about this, and I know some people haven't been able to get it to work. What I found on mine is that the button on the Alpha Rex light itself is really sticky. So when I press it, it would get stuck in that position, which means it wouldn't release the OEM trunk button. So what I did was pulled that button out using some needle nose pliers, and took a 16 64 drill bit and bored out that hole so that the button could move more freely. You just wanna take your time with this and be careful so you don't crack your lens or anything like that. 
but once you've done that, the button moves a lot better and you can hear that when I press the button, it'll click and then release. I don't know how well the mic is gonna pick that up. But once I press it, the button goes back to its original position and it's not continuously pressing on the OEM button. You may also want to loosen the screws that are holding the OEM trunk button in place just to give it a little bit more room because I found that the further the button gets pushed towards the front of the lens here, the more stuck it gets. But now that I've bored out that hole, we don't have that problem. So if you are running into an issue where your trunk button doesn't seem to be working after you've installed this or you don't hear that clicking noise, that might be the culprit. Just take a 1664 drill bit and bore out that hole a little bit and you should be good to go. Now, let's deal with this wiring. We've got four wires coming out the back. What we need to do is take the two wires on the passenger side and route them over to the driver's side behind these supports. And we need to connect the two green wires together and the two black wires together. So grab the included red vampire clamps. I'm gonna start with the black wires. Take the wire from the passenger side, slide it into the hole that is closed off on the end, and then grab the driver's side wire and slide it into the open slot on the side and kind of push down on that metal piece to lock them into place. Make sure that they are centered into the slots and we're gonna grab a pair of pliers and squeeze that metal piece and that is gonna connect the two wires together. Like so. Once that metal piece is level with the red plastic, we can take this piece and fold it over and lock it into place. Make sure the wires aren't going anywhere and those two wires are now connected. We'll do the same thing with the green wires. So the wire from the passenger side slides into that hole that is capped and then the driver's side wire goes into the open slot. Push the metal piece down and then squeeze it with some pliers. Perfect, the wires are now connected together. So to route this to the inside of the trunk, we're gonna go through the grommet that is used for the third brake light and the trunk button. So I think we can get these wires through the grommet, through the existing holes without having to cut a new hole in here. But I am going to cut, let me grab those side cutters. I'm gonna cut this zip tie off. I'd rather try and use the existing holes rather than cut a new hole in here. So there's four individual holes. I'm gonna try to slide the wires through the existing holes and see if they come out the other side. All right, we've got one wire through, perfect. See, we didn't have to make a new hole on here, we'll just have to grab another zip tie and tighten it down once we have both wires through. So for the green wire, just pick a different hole, don't try to shove both of them into the same hole because it's gonna be more difficult. I know you can't really see anything that I'm doing, but once you actually, if you're actually doing this and you see the grommet, you'll know exactly what I'm doing. So I've got both wires through now. We didn't have to cut a hole in the grommet. Just grab another zip tie, tighten this down, and then we are good to go to get this reinstalled in the car. The car looks so weird without this piece. We're gonna get the wires through those two holes in the trunk and then just line up all these studs and the clips and it should just pop right into place. Look at that. Before we go any further, let's just take a look at this. Right off the bat, I can already tell that the fit and finish of this is worlds better than the one that I tested previously. 
Look at this transition that flows smoothly into the tail light. There's no weird curve right here. Yes, it does extend out a little bit further in the center section, but that's to be expected. There just isn't enough room in this area to stuff a light in there without extending it a little bit further, but it doesn't bother me at all. And again, the red goes hard, guys. Look at how good that looks. I can't wait to turn this thing on once we get it wired up. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is condensation. A lot of people are worried about condensation in aftermarket lights. I've had to deal with it a ton because of previous situations. But during the install of this, what I noticed is that the top edge of the lens extends all the way back to meet the trunk. And there's a slight gap before it meets the actual enclosed lens of the light fixture itself. So what can happen is if you wash your car or it rains, some moisture can get underneath that edge and make it appear as though there is water inside the light when that's actually not the case. If you notice moisture around the edges or top of the light, give it some time and it should clear up. Now, if you're seeing a bunch of water splash around in the inside of the light, obviously that is cause for concern. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you. But again, if it's just some moisture around the edges or top of the lens, give it some time and it should clear up on its own. Don't freak out right away. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you right now, this next part is going to suck because we need to route the included wiring harness from the trunk up to the two leads of the light itself. What I've done is unclipped all of the clips that are holding the, wire, the OEM wiring harness to the trunk lid. That way I can pull it out a little bit and make this more of a straight shot because we need to route it through this wiring loom right here, which is the part that kind of sucks. Ideally, you'd want something stiff like a straighten out clothes hanger. You stick this through and then pull your wire through. I don't have anything like that right now, so I'm going to try to manually push this through and uh, it's probably not gonna end well for me, but uh, through the magic of video editing, I'm gonna have this come out the other side. God damn it, this sucks. I think I almost got it though. Since I don't have a stiff straight edge thing to stick through there and pull the wire harness through, what I've been doing is kind of just inching my way through by pinching, pinching the harness with one hand my left hand and pulling it through and then squeezing the harness with the other so it doesn't go back towards the end and then kind of just inching my way towards the opening here and we are basically i think i see it come on i think we did it just a just a tiny bit of patience and look at that I've got everything pretty much put back where it needs to be. So the wiring loom is now reinstalled into the trunk and the hole on the car. And then all of the clips holding the harness in place are reinstalled. And we have the end of the Alpha Rex harness here and the leads to the actual light itself. So what we need to do is strip the ends of the wires and then grab some butt connectors and we're gonna connect these two wires together and if you're curious on how I have the wire harness routed, so we went through that wire loom. It just follows the OEM wiring harness down to the tail light area and it's gonna come out this hole right here. If you don't wanna use this hole, there's actually another hole right underneath the tail light area that has a small grommet in it. You can take that grommet out cut a small hole in it and then just slide this through and use that hole instead. That I think is the hole that I would recommend, but you can also use this hole. This is the hole that Alpha Rex recommends. So this is gonna connect to the connection on the tail light, and we just need to connect these together and we should be set. Grab our butt connectors. So black is gonna go to black and green is going to go to red. All right, those are both connected, so we should be set to go. I'm gonna reinstall the cover for the trunk lid, reinstall the tail light, and let's test this thing out. I'm gonna jump inside the car again now that we have everything installed. And check this out, guys. I'm gonna turn the headlights on. Look at how incredible the startup sequence looks with the trunk light installed. They've integrated the startup sequence so it flows perfectly with the taillights and it looks so 
good. And again, this is how the lights are gonna look at night when you're driving around with your headlights on. The only function of that trunk light is to be a parking light. When you're driving around during the day, it's just going to stay off. Technically, you could wire it up as a brake light if you really wanted to, but it's gonna be either that or the parking light. You're not gonna have both functions, but there it is, guys. And there you have it guys. We have both the Alpha Rex taillights and the trunk light installed. And I'm loving how this looks. The way they've integrated the trunk light bar into the taillights is perfect. The startup sequence is nuts. And then when the lights are on, it's such a eye-catching and unique appearance. If you guys are wanting to pick some of these up for yourself, maybe you want the red lens like I did or the smoked or clear lens, all of them are available on the Driven Media website. I'll leave links down in the description. Maybe we need to do their fourth brake light next. Let me know what you guys think. Did I overdo it with the red or does this look as good as I think it does? I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts, but that is gonna do it for today. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget about the giveaway. And I'll see you guys next time.